now it's tell me on the cell. Yeah, yeah. You should never go and let. Uh, yeah, mm, yeah, 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 yeah. Hypothetical for Calipians. Invalidation in your acceptance. I never needed you. No, I never needed you. I never needed you. No, I never needed you. I would tell my younger self. It's a whole bunch of things that I would tell my younger self if I had the opportunity to go back and look in the mirror and say, hey, bruh, I need you to do this. <laughs> I need you to do that. I think I would have a lot more money in the bank, you know what I'm saying? If I could go back and talk to my younger self, man, shout out to DT702. That was his joint called My Advice. Listen, we're going to dive straight into the show I got a guest, man, that is a veteran in the in the entertainment industry. You know what I'm saying? Um, she's owned everything from magazines, books. You know what I'm saying? She's helped put people in place. You know what I'm saying? She employs a whole bunch of people. You know what I'm saying? And she took the time out to come over here. You know what I'm saying? And holla at your boy. I am Nat Trill, NatTrill.com, man. We want to welcome Miss Jamila Just J. Wilkerson to the show you know what i'm saying how you feeling how you feeling i'm feeling dope how you are know you feeling? hey man i'm blessed even more blessed that you here today you know absolutely absolutely <laughs> hey so let's dive in let's get into the questions because uh i got a lot of questions for you man first let's let's start all the way from the beginning tell them where you're from you know what i'm saying um how you okay. got started all that good stuff right quick i am from indianapolis indiana well muncie indiana but i live in indianapolis my whole life um, I've, I've done a lot. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. Um, I started consulting um, in the business world when I was 18. Uh-huh. Um, I actually started off as the president of the, the women's football team, the WAFL. It's called um, the Indianapolis Vipers. Dope. So I started there. Then I started Hype Magazine. I was 22 when I started the Hype. What made you, like, out the blue just say, hey, you know what? I'm just going to dive into a whole magazine situation. What what made you? I was avoiding college, so I had to do something productive with my time. My mom like, look, you're going to do something. What you going to do? <laughs> so I chose publishing. Wow. Wow. So was that what you went initially went to college for? <laughs> or did you go to for something else and just like? Um, I was going to college at first for business. Uh -huh. And believe it or not, I flunked business. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> with the actual proposal and the outline for the Hype Magazine, I said I can start a business with a dollar. Wow. And my professor said, um, no, nah, I don't think that's possible, but it's possible. We're here 20 years later. Wow. What was the first step that you took to, um, you know, start the magazine? Um, I spent a dollar at Kinko's and printed my first flyer. And my mom worked for a company called Simon DeBarlo. Um, they own all the malls, the uh -huh. Simon malls. And they said, you know what? That's, that's that's Jamila. Go ahead and print up some stuff for her. So I only spent a dollar to no get doubt. the first initial copy. And then they let me do all the extra copies there. I passed out a lot of flyers from my first talent show and utilized the capital from that to pay for the first issue. And once again, now we're here. Started that thing with a dollar. You one, know what I'm saying? One buck. <laughs> it's crazy because to hear that you flunk business. Yeah, I did. And I know, I know, <laughs> you know, education wise, you're, you got a doctorate. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So how did you go from, look, I'm, you know, I'm not going to take this particular subject serious, right. but I'm going to go and actually get fully educated. I mean, you I went took, all, all the way to the serious. top. I took it serious. I just don't think that my professor and I seen eye to eye. Mm. Um, I think that was my methods and my approach. I was already in the digital era you know, in 98. So they're like, what are you talking about? Digital stuff. What is this? You know, so I, I think that my approach and my thought process is people just weren't ready for. So when I would write my term papers, it was too far fetched, you know, yeah. for them. It was just really too far fetched. But all the things that I actually put in those original plans in school for my papers, I actually implemented throughout the years with my business now. Yeah. Was um when you first started hype, was it like kind of like an area type of situation? Or like, like a you know something that you pushed into college or. Well, when I first started the magazine, it was actually a literary magazine, so it was like columns from A to Z. It was never meant to be hip hop. Um, that changed the night before. 
I had actually got blessed a week before to do the Great Goose Tour with Lil Jon and the Eastside Boys, Bone Thugs and Harmony. Um, shout out to Bone. I was just out with them a couple of weeks ago. Um, and um, A-Ball MJG. Dope. So that was my first run in with like the hip hop stuff. And I was like, well, this is kind of cool too. So Little John and them, the, the company they were with at the time was TBT Records. They sent over some really dope pictures. Little John was looking grungy and crazy. And he had these glasses. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? Let's take this literary stuff. Let's put them on the front cover. So we went about that way. Um, so it was still kind of mixed up. We had a lot of different columns in there first. So our first issue, Little John and Eastside Boys, we dropped it Circus City Classic weekend and people were handing it back. Wow. Because it was like too rough for them. You know, I'm in Indiana, so they're looking like, what is this and who is this and why are you handing this to me? Because Lil John and Eastside Boys, they hadn't came out yet. They uh -huh. weren't blown up, you know. Wow. So we was putting them out, handing them people, people who would keep them. I used to drop the magazines in the elevator, <laughs> hoping somebody <laughs> would pick them up. Dang, so, so, so <laughs> you literally, you know, printed out a, a whole bunch of magazines, not yeah. really knowing if people were going to even you nah. know, check for them. No. Nope. And, and they just kind of just just worked yep i used yeah. to get up in the morning and put flyers on people's doors i almost got shot a couple of times oh man you know <laughs> what are you doing in my house at five o'clock in the morning but i was up i was grinding i was i was out there i was gonna make sure that you know everybody knew the brand wow so got the magazines you 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 going door to door you know what I'm absolutely saying? how did you take it like like national Mm, the same thing. I mean, I was boosted to the ground. If I had to go to Texas, I drive to Texas. When I'm there, I'm putting two, 200,000 flyers in the streets. You know, I wow. had a rap truck. I'm going to make sure I'm in the hoods. I'm going to make sure everybody know who I am. I'm going to make sure I connect with the right people and I help the right people. Wow. So you state to state. You went from door yeah. to door to state to state. Like I'm still state to state, <laughs> door to door. I still carry a backpack around. I still got my flyers. No one treats me like the CEO or the founder of the magazine because yeah. I'm still like, doing street work i get to the club i'm putting my flyers out i'm shaking hands i'm yeah. locked in with everybody and looking at me like well who you work for yeah. i'm like well, whoever you want me to work for <laughs> doesn't bother me yeah one of the you things know. one of the things you said you know um part of your your success is just kind of being in people's face Absolutely. you know what i'm saying and um what what made you decide hey look even though i got a full team that's fully capable of doing this thing i'm gonna stay right here and i'm gonna keep doing it because nobody can really put push the media message like I can, you know. And then also people don't care about people. Yeah. I do. You know, wow. because I was there when no one really actually cared to hear my vision. Mm -hmm. So I'm always locked in with people. You know, sometimes I'm rushing and I'm moving real fast, but I do care and I take time to show people that I care. Wow. Wow. That's got to be d big. How important is relationships in this industry? That's it. I mean, that's it. Yeah. If you don't have a dollar to your name, if you have relationships, you'll have a dollar tomorrow. Wow. And you uh, built quite a few of those, huh? <laughs> I have I have probably about five or 6,000 numbers in my phone. I, you know, I'm, I'm mad at Instagram. I'm like, I'm following 7,500 people, but I know these people. I can't unfollow nobody. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey could you imagine though if you did like unfollow somebody they like, call to like yeah. hey you unfollow me everything good i'm like man but i had the president on the line i had to follow obama you know my bad <laughs> <laughs> you know. that's, hey, that's what happens when, you, when you're doing it big like that um so the owner of hype magazine mm -hmm. and then you started um a couple of other magazines let's let, let's talk about some of those well, I started a LGBT magazine. Um, it's eight years old now. It's called Rainbow Affair. I mm -hmm. wanted to give an outlet to the LGBT community. And recently, we dropped the Hype Kingdom, which is a gospel magazine. Um, Bonzel's handling that. He does a lot of stuff with, like, the Stellars, Fred Hammond. Yeah. He's really in, in the industry, so I wanted him to handle that. We pushed out the Hype Latino brand, and then I dropped oh. 20 individual brands for each market. So we got like the Hype Magazine Mississippi, the Hype Magazine New York, the Hype Magazine wow. California. So I'm, I'm doing it so we can get back to the citywide focus. Um, a lot of times when you grow, you kind of lose the connection with the streets. Yeah. And really the streets made us, and they're, the streets are gonna keep us. That's really yeah. what it is. Like we wanna be the voice of the streets as we always have. Um, that's why we don't gossip. That, that was a slow grind for us, not gossiping and not being in all the mess. Yeah. You know, a lot of stuff blows up fast when they in the controversy, but 
I really mind my business. You know, what you got going on in your personal life has nothing to do with me. We just, I'm there to support you for real. Absolutely. You know, not for fake. Absolutely. But, um, you know, that that's pretty much the growth and development for the citywide issues. I want to make sure we stay connected. Yeah. How was the transition going from, you know, physical copies of the magazine to, you know, the digital um, the whole digital uh, transformation of the industry. Well, I started digital in 2002. We, I used to upload all the pages to the, the internet and do it in HTML, page one, page two, page mm-hmm. three. So we were digital before we were print. Oh, wow. You know, so that's what I was telling you. I was a little bit ahead of my time. Mm. <laughs> you know that's why that professor couldn't really get with you he couldn't cause. grasp the concept <laughs> i had so many theories and i was a computer nerd you know i i didn't really when i went to my i'll, I'll tell you this story i went to ball state first when yeah. i went to college i was probably reading on a seventh grade level and i didn't even know how to save on the floppy disk wow when i went to college because <laughs> i was computer i didn't know nothing about computers mm-hmm. you know we wasn't really raising that era so i went to my mom's job one day and i was typing out my business plan. I done typed this dang on thing like 200 times. She's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm typing this plan. I got to get it done. Where's the whiteout? She was like, girl, if you don't type that on the computer and save it on the disk. <laughs> and I was like, what? So she showed me and I felt so crazy. And after that, I got consumed uh-huh. with computers. Oh, you was on the typewriter? Yeah, I was on the typewriter. Oh, okay. Dig, dig that. I ain't so, heard about the typewriter so in a minute. So I got consumed with a computer. <laughs> And then I actually went to the library every day for one year after I, I quit school, I quit mm-hmm. college, and then I went to school every day. So I went wow. to the same college that I quit every day to the library for a whole year and taught myself business. Wow. Yeah. It's like nowadays, you know, you, you got college, but I mean, you can just go to, to YouTube Aversity and uh, learn everything you need to learn right there on YouTube. And, you know, you got somebody in, in whatever field that you need right. that could teach you. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, right, right. Um, the difference is, you know, everybody don't read books. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm one of those people. <laughs> I skim. You know, I just like, let me get what I need out of this real quick. Yeah. You know, but I process things from a a, a street level more uh-huh. so than a corporate level. You know, streets, people don't respect the streets and the, the way of thinking of the streets. They're like, everything's ghetto. But yeah. really... If you're in a situation, <laughs> a real crazy situation, you better hope somebody is there that's from the streets. Yeah. Because they're going to survive. That's real. <laughs> they're going to survive it. That's real. I want to get into like a, a little bit more of a serious topic. Um, okay. How was it being LGBT, you know, um, <laughs> coming up? I know like the industry wasn't as receptive back in those days. Oh, I wasn't. I, di- I didn't. I didn't come out until after my mom died. <laughs> Cause I wasn't wow. about to tell her I was gay, so we we just let that you know. So for for the when I started, I was still kind of in the phase of being girly, yeah, you know. And then I just popped out one day, and I was like, God, I could be myself. Here we go, you know. Mm-hmm. And they chopped my neck every chance they got. <laughs> wow. They was like, No, not only do you got all the girls, you getting money too. Oh no, you're not. You know, we gonna chop your neck. <laughs> so did like, you did you get like a lot of you know, people that wasn't really receptive to you being LGBT? Um, I was so direct, people kept it to themselves. Mm. You should, that would probably be your best interest to keep it to yourself. Yeah. For me, yeah. I was very direct. <laughs> yeah. What What would you say would be the difference, be, you know, coming up then and then, you know, how the industry is now? It's no difference. People still got the same attitude. They still negative. Wow. It, you know, people ain't changed. You know, we just got a little bit more technical savvy, you know, with technology. But people still have the same demeanor and same nasty attitudes that they had years ago about everything. Absolutely. They just hide it better. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like um, seems like it's more receptive, though. The the game what, is a the lot LGBT more. The LGBT community yeah. more receptive? Oh, absolutely. But, but, but. What's the I mean, so there's still some. I think there's a lot of people that accept it because they have to. Yeah. But behind closed doors, you hear people and how they really feel about it. Yeah. Especially when they get mad at you or they don't like something. That's the first thing that comes out of their mouth. So, you know, I don't think people, I don't think everybody's cool with it. I think people just are cool with it because they have to be at this point. No doubt. No doubt. You know. Um, How did you get into writing the books? Um,. Well, 
um, my cousin, Dave Dorson, he played for the Chicago Bears and a couple other teams. Um, they based the movie Concussion around him. Um, he taught me time management and his brother mm-hmm. David. Um, I'm sorry, his brother Michael, my cousins. They taught me time management. Mm-hmm. So I did the time management book. Um, they asked me, like, what do you do the most? <laughs> and I was being funny. And I was like, ah, I use the bathroom. I, I, I go shower. I, I do this. I do that. Ah, you know. But when you calculated the time that you spend in the bathroom, you know, two, three hours a day grooming yourself, you, you times that times 80 years, you're looking at two years in the bathroom of wow. your life. So when I started to process and break down time, I started to see, oh, wait a minute, time is important. So that was my first book, Time Management. My second book is Igniting Your Life, Self-Esteem to Entrepreneurship, 10 Steps to Success in Business. So I basically wrote a book out to save you 10 years of your life, Mm -hmm. trying to learn and understand how to process business. Wow. It's really a flow, you know. We don't know that. But the first thing you got to do is, that's actually in my book, is to reprogram and detox your thinking and get your get your game face on. Because it's yeah. a lot, like you said, how did you deal with being LGBT? Yeah. Well, I didn't deal with it because I didn't care. Wow. You know, <laughs> I didn't care what you thought about me. I'm going to do what I want to do. I got to get up and make it happen. You don't mm-hmm. live in my house. I don't have to see you every night. But that takes a lot of self-esteem and it takes a lot of extra things that you have to kind of build within yourself to actually get to that point to where you feel comfortable wow so so um magazine first then you became an author or you already kind of the had? author stuff is new that was just something i did a couple of years ago i'm old i just i, I need to do something <laughs> <laughs> i hear that uh, so also on top of magazine on top of the books you have a couple facilities that that you've opened up that um you know you run different uh you know shows and stuff out there let's talk about that as far as the shows yeah um i partnered in with a company i acquired a company um 20 percent of a company called over tv mm-hmm. and partnered with a phenomenal lady by the name of cassandra cooper um, no she's really dope i've never met a female that can mentor me and i actually did so the guy was awesome um she's on her she's on her a game so um quick story She's like, you know, come out to L.A. whenever you're ready. Let's, let's do this. So I got here, and she's like, okay, meet me over at the at the film studio. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm going to be on my way. So I get there, and I'm looking around. I'm like, this is huge. It's like 70,000 square feet. I'm like, uh-huh. oh, okay. Looking around. Like, hey, sis, this is nice. She said, yeah, this is us. Wow. And I was like, oh, oh, okay. When, when did this happen? <laughs> So she had actually got this building and got everything like a week or two before I got to the city. But oh. I, but she didn't tell me. So I kind of walked into an awesome opportunity, an awesome blessing. So that's one of the good things that are going on right there. Um, we're creating content as well. What um, city was that based out of? It's in it's in L.A. It's in San, what, San Clarita. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What was, what was the name of that one? It's called The Wonderland. Wonderland. Okay. I'm actually looking... Um, uh, I, I'm blessed because uh, <laughs> I got a chance to call uh, Leonidas the DJ um, when I found out that I was um, going to be interviewing you today. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, you know, I had to ask a couple of questions. I was like, uh, you know, is there anything, you know, that I might need to know that I could bring up on the show? And, you know, <laughs> you know, he slid, slid a couple of little nuggets at, at your boy. You know what I'm saying? So um, shout out to D, uh, and that's DJ a nugget, Leonidas. I ain't talked about that. I haven't even posted <laughs> about that. So. It's a lot of stuff that we haven't posted about, but it's good to do that and, and not post your whole life so people don't really know what's going on. Yeah. I was uh, watching another one of the interviews that you did, and um, I think they were talking about a, um, a facility in Georgia. You still have a, fa- a facility in nope. Georgia? I moved everything here. Okay. Here in Vegas or here? In L.A.? Uh, LA. I guess I am in Vegas. Oh. <laughs> I moved, let me retract that. I moved everything to California. No doubt. No <laughs> doubt. You know what? Maybe you just, you, you, you speak in, you know what I'm saying, in the future. I wanted, to move to, I wanted to move to Vegas. It was actually my turn to pick, but my wife won. So we had to go to California. Yeah, would y'all flip a coin? Like, what, what you got? What you got on it? No, you know how it is with a wife. They just get their way. With yeah. no coin flipping, she just, yeah. like, yeah, all right. <laughs> but I love Vegas. I hear that. Well, you know, you can always have, you know, a couple of situations here, you know what I'm saying? We got Leonidas here, and, you know, uh, from what I understand, he a part of the team now, huh? Yeah, 
Yep, he's yeah. going to be um, handling all the marketing and promotion here in Nevada. No doubt, no doubt, man. So uh, shout out once again to Leonidas, the DJ, you know, doing big things, man, representing for Nevada. You know, just came here, you know, in, in less than a six months span and, and, and just like took over the city. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to shout out to him, man. Definitely. So, uh, magazines, mm-hmm. uh, books, mm-hmm. facilities, mm-hmm. you know, um, I also read somewhere where you, you actually wrote a couple of songs. Yeah. <laughs> you know, songwriter who <laughs> anybody that you uh you wrote for specifically Can I plead the fifth on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, what are you digging? You digging, boy? You done oh, dug yeah, down hey, deep. You know, um, I think I think my manager, you know, actually uh, kind of <laughs> slid that one to me. You know, we I got my little research team. <laughs> I'm like, hey, whatever oh, I can't man. get, some of some one of us gonna figure it out. You know what I'm saying? So, man, I I, I song write, I sing, and I rap. Really? Um, yeah, my my. Um, we're doing a reality show with me and a young lady by the name of Zarilla Bacon. Uh, uh-huh. She's a celebrity chef here in Vegas. She does infused cooking. So we're doing a reality show. No doubt. And the reason why I never pursued being an artist is because I had stage fright. So I couldn't sing on stage. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> so a- in, the, in the reality show, she's supposed to be building my character and my, my confidence to go on stage and make it happen which is not going to happen but hey <laughs> <laughs> well i'm interested in um you know hearing something you know maybe i'll let you hear something i, yeah. I can i can get it in now i can yeah. get the singing on that, that church sound you know oh, oh well we're not on stage you know what i'm saying church, so church <laughs> you got a you got a couple of bars or something that you can you can give the people right quick <laughs> <laughs> that's how you get <laughs> no doubt no doubt well y'all better tap into the reality show so now i right, we segue um mm-hmm. television oh yeah i'm producing a reality show too it's called sex lies and business um we'll actually wow. be shooting again in atlanta this weekend um and then i have one coming up with her um i'm involved in a lot of things no doubt it was is that your first time you know on television no, I've been on television a couple of times, just in, you know, some B-roll footage. Y'all catching me. Is that Jay walking to the kitchen? Yeah, that no was doubt. Jay. That was me. Thank you. Um, but this is my first time producing the show. No doubt. Is that something I don't that you're know looking what, in? No, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm learning, you know. One of my close friends, uh, Slick23, shout out to Slick. Um, he's the director of Love & Hip Hop. So I kind of watched him from a distance, but I'm, no, I'm far from being him, definitely. No. But I think I can pull it off. No doubt. I mean, you pulled off a whole, you know, magazine and books and all that. That I mean, television just got to be around the corner somewhere. Yeah, I'm just having fun with it. Yeah. So it's not that serious. Like, I'm just having a good time. I want everybody to have a good time. Um, even with Z and I show, we talked about, you know, how we can create controversy with each other. And I'm like, hell no, we're going to laugh. We're going to have yeah. fun. We're going to show people that you don't have to have the drama. I, it's nothing against it, but I, I just don't have a drama-filled life. Yeah. So I don't want to act like I got drama. I feel like that keeps you young when you yeah. when you step away from the drama. You know, mm-hmm. I'm one of those type of people, man. I I cut a person off like that. Like if if, yeah. if you bring in drama to me, I will and disconnect. And hey, I my cut off game is strong. When I leave yeah. meetings and I don't want to deal with you, nice meeting you, and I keep it moving. Like simply because I don't have the time to to offer to anything that doesn't make me happy. Yeah. You know, I don't care what it is. I don't care who you are, family, friends, or foe, business, or whatever. If I'm not happy with a situation, I just let it go. Yeah. Happiness is important. Very much so. Because that's when your job actually becomes a job. You know what I'm saying? I feel like you make a lot more money when you enjoy what you do. Absolutely. You know, you can go to work with a smile. You know, sometimes when, um, you know, I I work in the the audio field, you know what I'm saying, as Mm -hmm. an audio tech. And um, sometimes when I go to work, it's like, you know what? I could do this today. You Absolutely. know what I'm saying? I ain't got a, I ain't got a trip. You know, this is just what I do. Right. You know, um, d- have you ever in your, like the span of your career, just kind of hated what you were doing? All the time. <laughs> <laughs> All the time. All the time. Was the point where it started actually feeling like a job? Um, it did. And when it started feeling like a job, I, I stopped everything. Actually, I 
you know, <laughs> a year and a half ago when I was in Atlanta, I Cassandra came to the city. She sat down. She was like, what are you doing? I was like, oh, what do you mean? She, I was like, I got, I'm lit, sis. I got all this stuff going on. She said, you, you got too much going on to where you're not focusing on yourself and what you're doing. Yeah. That was Monday. <laughs> Friday, I had a U-Haul, <laughs> packed up the office, packed up the crib, and moved back to Indiana. Wow. So this would be last about last year. Um, and said, okay, I got back to Indiana. You would be the first person to hear this on mm-hmm. any other any other level. I got back to Indiana, and I got depressed. And wow. not depressed in a way that I'm like, oh, my God, life is over. I just got depressed with time and saying, okay, maybe I could have did something different. Yeah. So I said, I don't think I want to do any of this stuff no more. So I went and got a job for the first time in 20 years. Wow. I, so that was my detox. I worked for 30 days. I couldn't do no more in 30 days. I ain't going to lie. It wasn't wow. for me. Working ain't for me. <laughs> I ain't had a job since I was 22. <laughs> but, you know, for real, the last day I called my boss, I said, it was nice meeting you guys. Yeah. But I feel better about myself now. I'm going to go. <laughs> 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 yeah, but that was the best 30 days of my life, like, just to kind of get a refresher and get back to yeah. the real world. What blew it was Kane Marco. I'm going to call you out. He came in. He was delivering something. And he walked in. Remember uh, coming to America? Oh, yeah. my God, it is you. <laughs> That's what he did to me. He came in. I was sitting there working. He was like, Jay, what's going on? I was like. Yeah, <laughs> it's a whole different game. Hey, what are you doing here? I, yeah. I sent my stuff over to get on the TV show. And these people sitting there looking at me like. And I'm sitting there like. <laughs> my heaven is blown. My heaven is blown. The funny thing is, I just recently went through that situation at work. You know, um, being like AV Tech. Right. I'm, I'm sitting up here setting up for the show, and um, this person comes in, and it was like, not trail. <laughs> I was like, oh, no. You know what I'm saying? Like, what you doing here, man? I am like, oh, bruh. You know, it, it's just, it don't feel good. You know, no. I even though, like, look, I'm working like you working. And we, you know, we all trying to do the same thing, feed yeah. our families and stuff like that. But when you've been working for yourself for so long, yep. and you and you're a boss, and your and your mentality is being a boss. Yep. You know what I'm saying? You make your own schedule, you do your own thing, you bring in your own money, and then to go back, you know, to the nine to five life. Even though you know my life isn't necessarily nine to five, right? But the nine to five life, and um. I just sometimes, you know, I think I'm kind of at that that point where it's like, yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to feel normal <laughs> again. You know, I've been I've been doing this 20 years, so I've been around a lot of celebrities, a lot yeah. of social, you know, a lot of social media influencers, political figures. Yeah. And it sometimes just gets unreal, and then you kind of lose who you are. And like I said, when I went to that that change of what what am I going to do here? Yeah. It wasn't even a midlife crisis. It was just like. I just don't want to deal with nothing fake, you know? Yeah. And and am, am I fake because I'm not seeing the fake? You yeah. know, because you used to be able to predict, you see the fake, you're like, hey. But I start dealing with things differently and accepting the BS. And I'm like, wait a minute, this ain't me. So I had to step back and kind of get back to my roots. But I, I got shocked back into to Shea Quick after that first check came. <laughs> it was so weird seeing that first check, and I was looking at the check. So I put it in the bank. I was proud of my check. And it said two fifty, two hundred and fifty five dollars can clear and the other money can clear like in six days. I'm like, well, who can survive? Yeah. Who can survive on this? Yeah. Like I could never work a regular job without working two to three jobs to keep up with what I have going on. Yeah. The economy's so messed up. I mean, it, it's really messed up. And that's really what made me motivated enough to really get that second book out that ignites your life because you can't survive on three hundred dollars here and four hundred dollars there five hundred dollars there you can't survive it's not possible so i want to ignite as many people as possible to have the self-esteem to go out on their own to to add more value to their situation Mm -hmm. you can still work a job but you still need to have that secondary income most of that needs to come from you being creative and and getting something together for the family when um you you made a statement earlier um you just wanted to be normal when was it that you figured out that I'm not normal. <laughs> well, I figured that out. Well, you know, I can't say a lot of stuff on air, so. But when the girls start throwing their underwear in the in the van, 
in the rap truck. I knew I wasn't normal then. And then when I can't go to the club without security in some places, that's not normal. Yeah. You know, um, when people don't have real conversations with you, that's when it starts getting depressing. Yeah. You come into the office, you can barely say hi. It's like, Jay, I need you to, uh, I need you to help me. Uh, I need yeah. you to, and I'm like, well, dang, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm good. Yeah, I lost a toe yesterday. Yeah, I did. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. They don't even hear that. I did that to somebody one day. Yeah. You know, yeah, I lost a finger. And they like, girl, and you know, my album dropped next week, <laughs> but I lost a finger though, bro. Yeah. You know, they don't even care. And that's when it started to hit me like, Wait a minute. It doesn't matter how big you get, how much money you get. You know, if you don't have your self-worth and your, your self-esteem is not high, you're yeah. still going to be depressing and you're still going to fall to your face. That's so right. all this glitz and glamour, you walk around with your chains thinking you hot and you good, that stuff ain't nothing if you don't got people who love you. Yeah, that's you real. Know? That's real. Um, I went through a, a period where um, I got really sick. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I was crazy. You know, I had built up a, a pretty big following. Uh, we was doing shows like three times a week. You know, I was hosting events. Um, I'm an artist as well. Okay, you know now, let me find so, out you very white. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> um, you know, just I was doing a lot. And then I went through a period where I got real sick. And I just seen how people fell off. Yep. And, um, you know, it kind of dawned on me, like, you know what? People love you when you up. Yep. People care about you when you up, when you can do something for them. You know, but when, when the tables turn, you know what I'm saying, and you sitting there and um, you sick, you in the hospital, or, you know, you can't move and shake like you used to, then people like roaches when the lights cut on. I they all over the place, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Um, how did you build your, your core? Like, you know, when I say your core, I'm talking about the individuals that got you through the storm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I built my core by pushing them away. Honestly, my editor-in-chief, he would call and like, yo, I want to be involved with the magazine. I'm like, nah, I'm good. He called back. I want to be involved. Nah, I'm good. He called back. You know, so most of the people who are closer to me now, they actually put in time and effort to build real relationship with me. Yeah. You know, um, other than that, our team is small, so I tell people all the time, you know, we don't really need anybody else. You know, if yeah. you come aboard with us, it's, it's a blessing because it's deeper than the Hype Magazine. We yeah. a family. We look out for each other. We're going to grow together. You know, all my team, I'm on them. I'm up at 6, 7 o'clock in the morning like, okay, did you get that stuff I sent you for the credit? You know, I want to make sure everybody credit straight, everybody bankable, everybody can have their own. Although yeah. you working with the com with the company, because I don't, I don't like telling people they work for me. They work with this brand just like I do. I own it. I started it, but we all slave to the brand at the end of the yeah. day. Yeah. Um, and I try to get all of my team motivated to have their own. I want us all to live on the same street. And I, right. if, if I'm the CEO, that means you can't make as much money as I make. So therefore, I'm trying to help you create other revenue streams to make sure you're straight so your legacy is, is on point as well. You know, and a lot of people, they don't do that for their team. So my That's team is not just about the Hype Magazine. It's about us and our growth and development as a whole network and how we yeah. going to help each other through anything, you know. There's something about leadership. Leadership, when you're a leader, you're you're replaceable because mm -hmm. you, you you train your replacement. Right. You, 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 you teach people to do what you do. Absolutely. So if you absent, the ship don't sink because people already know how to move how to shake you right. know what i'm saying so the fact that you you got a team and and you helping people get financially stable yep. and you know creating opportunities for them and helping them go get their own opportunities that's true that's major yeah that's major that that to me that's a true leader yeah there's a lot of ceos out there there's a lot of presidents vice presidents out there but there's very few leaders yeah you know what i'm saying and um the fact that you college educated, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Black with a doctorate. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Does that change the dynamics when you walk into these meetings with the other side of, of, of the spectrum? You know what I'm saying? Half the time, uh, I don't even say nothing about doctor. And, and, and really, I'm just trying to tell you, like, I'm so forward with what I'm here for and what I want to do. Yeah. It, it is what it is, you know? 
if you can't get me together the way I need you to get me together, I'm going to go another direction. I'm still going to get it done. Yeah. You know, it's a book. Okay. That's it. I read it. I understand it. I process it. I make it happen. You don't want to do it. No, don't worry about it, sweetheart. Don't worry about it. We're going to get it done regardless, yeah. you know. So that's the difference between me, you know, a person that's going to get up and grind it out, work it out, make yeah. it happen. You know, if I got to pay for my stuff, I go I go to the paper route. I go straight some leaves up out the ground. That's what I did when I was a kid, mm -hmm. you know, outside of stealing everything. You know, <laughs> I don't steal no more. Disclaimer. But, you know, I, I w I'm from the streets. Yeah. You know, we I didn't have anything coming up. No doubt. So I appreciate and value every opportunity that I get. That's why my stuff moves different. Everything feels different. They're like, oh, every time I'm around the hype, you know, I just feel like it's family. I'm like, it is family. Yeah. You know? So if yeah. you want to be a part of it, you got to bring family values or you got to get gone. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's it's building. You know, everybody want to jump on the flight, but people don't want to stick through the turbulence. Yeah. You know we ain't on no flights. I don't like flying. So <laughs> you like flying? <laughs> nah. We backpacking through the wilderness. <laughs> We out here in these streets, you know what I mean? <laughs> Sound like somebody I know, you know, <laughs> don't want to get on the plane. Like, we got some, we got to go, and I ain't trying to drive, you know nah. what I'm saying? That, that nah. man, that drive be long. Definitely. I'm yeah. telling you, bro, this this business, it, it could take you under, and I, I'm telling you, I've maintained my sanity, and I've stayed away from things. Even when we were out in Vegas the other day, you know, just hearing what could happen, and the guy keeps telling me, I gotta watch out for this, you gotta watch out. I don't have to watch out for anything because I don't put myself in a position in the first place to be involved with the shenanigans. Yeah. I'm not hanging. I don't need to be at your house at 2 30 in the morning. Absolutely. I need to be asleep. I'm yeah. good. I'm gonna go home. <laughs> for real, for real. You know. For real. What are some of the things, um, maybe some of the things that you would tell people to look out for in the industry? Um it's crazy. I, I can't really tell you to look out for anything because sometimes people don't show their face until two years, three years later. So you can, mm. you can pick, 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 pick. I tell people to get stronger within themselves. Like you have the tolerance, you have the ability to say no, mm -hmm. you know, you have strength. Cause a lot of people, they get suckered into things. You know, every night somebody's asking me to take a drink. Mm -hmm. Every night somebody asks me, you want to smoke? You know, I used to drink. I used to smoke. I would prefer not to do it now because I'm the protector of my my family, my team. Yeah. So I'm the eyeball when my assistant or my editor goes to the bathroom and they had to drink. I'm the one watching them. Yeah. So if I'm drinking and I'm high, then who's going to protect the team? That's right. So I know everything going on in the club. I know who got what, who looked like they didn't get patted down, who's this, who's that. I know it all. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I'm still in protection mode all the time. Yeah. No doubt, no doubt. That's why you're a boss. That's why you're yeah. winning. You know what I'm saying? Um, let's talk about COVID. The uh, whole COVID situation. COVID kind of took the the whole game, yeah. you know, by storm. Um, was your business affected by COVID? No, because I am my business. I do all my web stuff, my graphics, mm -hmm. you know. I can maintain. So while other people were being laid off, I still can run my business because I know how to operate it and run it. Wow. So no effect at all? Not for me. That's dope. I turned up. That's dope. I think um, during during COVID, COVID was my come up. Because yep. I was sick the year prior to COVID. Mm -hmm. So I had a stroke. I was out for almost a year, you know, maybe a little bit uh, wow. longer. And, um, you know, that was my healing process. But through my healing process, I ended up starting this right here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all, the online situation was the situation to have right there. You right. know what I'm saying? So we was live streaming. Yeah. And um, so I was in everybody's living room, and that's kind of how um, I kind of came out of my funk. You right. know what I'm saying? And built from there, you know. What advice would you tell um, young entrepreneurs that's interested in getting into the entertainment industry? Um, the advice I would give is to listen to your mind. And, and and stick with your core values. A lot of time you get around the older people and they have so many great ideas and they sound wonderful, but they don't have a car or they don't have a phone. Uh, they live at their mama house and they 44 years old, 50 years old. Stop listening to all the elders. All the elders don't, just because they're the elder 
<laughs> doesn't mean they have the knowledge to lead you and guide you into the right direction. Yeah. And be okay with your innovation, you know, because people can take you off your course. When you're trying to focus on something that you feel is innovative, everybody has something to say about it. Well, I think you should do it this way, and I think you should do it that way. So I think that the best thing I can tell all the youngsters is if you have an idea, process it, put it together, research it, develop it, then put it into the marketplace, then talk about it. Because what happens is people beat you down before you even get the dang on ideal out. No doubt. So a lot of the youngsters, they never pursue being an entrepreneur because they don't have any self-worth because they've already been beat down to, to made, made to feel like they can't do it in the first place. No doubt. So no sometimes... Doubt. Even though you feel like you're alone, it's okay. It's not going to be a long time that you're feeling alone. It's going to be a little bit time. But process your thought pro- process your thoughts first. Yeah. And then approach the marketplace, your family and friends about the idea. Because I remember I, I was like, man, the magazine, da, da, da. My cousins be like, yeah, you still doing that little magazine? I tell them, now it's not little. Wow. It's, it's big. And you guys didn't help. But you should have. But you yeah. didn't help me. So yeah. now you can't borrow any money. I mean, That's real. Saying. I don't have five dollars for you. I don't have any cash out. Sorry, you didn't That's help. That's right. But That's yeah, right. That's what I would tell all the youngsters in the world. Just, just really stick to your guns when you have a good idea. Make it happen. I got a couple more minutes. I wanted to ask you really quickly about um, managing. Um, you, you said that you manage a couple of um, people or artists. Mm-hmm. Or, um, let's talk about that that element and and how did you get into that. I didn't get into it. I got forced into it. Um, it was just kind of like, you my manager. I'm like, I am? Really? Oh, okay. Mm, I think I did that, too. <laughs> <laughs> I think oh. I did that, too. You know, somebody was kind of helping me on the side, and I just was like, yeah, um, my manager. And, and I just it's started like, calling her my manager. So, <laughs> yeah, I did the same thing. I manage a couple of people. Um, yeah. I manage um, an artist by the name of Deja Marie. She's my wife as well, and no she's went through the boot camp system where I didn't help her with anything. I made her learn it all. My other artists, um, LT, same thing, um, Infamous. I got a, a bunch of people that I've helped build, and I've made them learn the business. They, they Sometimes they don't understand it. They're like, Jay's not helping me like she could be, but I'm not going to help you because no one's going to help you if I'm not around. Yeah. So you need to know what it takes to be great you need to understand how you get paid Mm -hmm. you know a lot of artists they want you to manage them and they don't even understand how to make money yeah and then when the money comes and someone takes their cut they're like oh i'm getting screwed over yeah no i've already put in 18 months of sweat equity then another two thousand dollars on gas Mm -hmm. another sixty thousand dollars on travel and your clothes and your baby mama drama mm-hmm. and getting you out of jail and doing yeah. all of these other things. I've, I've done that too. I've helped you. So I want to recoup. It was That's an right. investment. So a lot of times they mistake the management for an investor. Yeah. You know, yeah. I didn't come in to be your investor. Well, I need, can you hook me up with, wait a minute, this is your business. Yeah. I'm just managing your business. So if I go to the bank and I'm managing the bank the bank has a check for me at the end of the week. That's right. But artists are like, you my manager, but you my investor, mm-hmm. and you my counselor, and you my taxi. Oh, yeah. And you my publicist. Mm-hmm. And you my web designer. Whatever skill set you got, that's what I need from you. Yeah. And it's like, wait a minute. That's not what a manager is. So, yeah. 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 Um, I knew what you was getting at. You didn't ask the question, so I just helped you. Yeah, that, answer that for you. <laughs> oh, it was it was coming. It was coming, but you, <laughs> it was coming. You know, like I said, um, you know, my show. Um, even though you know we do a lot of interviews, um, it's just the education of the game. Yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because uh, if 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 we have an hour worth of conversation and then people leave and they don't they don't know more than what they they did when they first started listening then right. i didn't do my job right right you know what i'm saying so um i want to say personally i want to say I, I appreciate your time i, I appreciate, appreciate you. you giving me the opportunity to, to have this conversation with you 